wonderful tourism industry. Today I'm really happy to be here with you and have you at the ITE Future Day. And I think it's really great that you all came here to explore the future with us. So take a look at your neighbor, please. And give an applause to your neighbor and say, great that you came here. Great that you came here and discover the future with us. I'm so happy to be here. That's why I brought you the great thing. I brought you a time machine. And this time machine is actually not very big, but it helps to get 1,600 people directly into the future. To start the time machine, I need everybody of you. I need everybody to stand up, please. Please, everybody stand up. We need the whole team of the ITP. Please, everybody, we need everybody stand up. And I start the time machine now. We need to connect our brains. Please take the hand of your neighbor. Take the hand of your neighbor and connect to your neighbor to build out the connected intelligence station. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please close your eyes. Close your eyes and start your dream. How will the travel industry look like in 2025? How will your business look like? 2025. Please close your eyes, ladies and gentlemen, and start your dream. We did it! We are 5th of March. You can sit down. You are a great team. You did a, did a good job. Thank you. 5th of March, 2025, 7.10 a.m. actually, and we wake up and the good news are, computer disappeared. Some of you might remember IBM mainframes in former times, like big computers, the same of this room. Now we have iPhones, iChips, directly in there, in our eye. So we wake up, if we want, if we want, we save our dream, and then, then we take a look at the time machine again, it's really true, it's really 5th of March 2025, 7, 10 a.m. It's all very blurry and dizzy, sehr nebelig noch, weil die Party war gestern ziemlich hart, wir müssen jetzt erstmal in die Küche und etwas trinken, we have to drink something, so you see, we don't need to start a computer, no mobile phone, all information are augmented in our field of view, the whole world is multi-touch enabled, so everything is clickable and interactive, every surface becomes an interactive surface, and now my favorite application is object detection. Everything you take in your hands is object detected and explained for all target groups. Now, now we have to go to work, especially everything is transacted. So great for dealers, you can directly buy more. Now we have to go to work. We start our mobile automated navigation system, destination work. You know this from the BMW and the windshield. Now you have directly in your field of view the navigation system and make our day way to work. My favorite application, ladies and gentlemen, on the street is face detection. So everybody we meet is face detected. We see what are the people twittering, what do they want from me, what, what mood, what mood are the people, good day. And advertising, ladies and gentlemen, is totally personalized, individualized. Everybody has individual ads. And the mobile automated navigation system shows us our way. I always ask the smart people here in the first row, good morning. Nice to have you here. What's your name? Carl. Carl. Carl, from your perspective, what we've seen so far, is it more science or fiction? Is it Wissenschaft or Fiction? What we saw? It's imaginable. It's imaginable. It's kind of a mix. That's true. It's an applause for you, an applause for Carl, and a book for you. Because who of you heard actually from the University of Washington developing active contact lenses? Please, at least 10%. One, two, active contact lenses. Nobody heard? Active contact lenses. What they use, can you dim the line a little, is flexible, flexible screens, like OLED screens, with displays on it. And in the laboratory, they are so flexible, you can embed them into contact lenses. And then you have your field of view directly on your eye. The display on, on your eye. Let's see how this works. University of Washington. Imagine having the entire internet available at the blink of an eye with a computer monitor on your contact lens. It's already more science than fiction. Already more science than fiction. At the University of Washington, a research team has set its sights on creating a real bionic eye. The 
challenge, build a screen as small as your iris and figure out how to wirelessly connect it to a computer you put in your pocket. So then the ear field communicates, you send data to the net, and if you combine this with a small camera technology, you have the perfect dating platform. Everybody you need is, need is immediately case detected, and you see what other people twittering, what other YouTube feeds, what is their name, you never forget a birthday again, and you always have small talk. So I face detection. Atlanta. Everybody becomes a friend. How's the video, vlog, and stuff going? Rock it out. I'm gonna check out that latest episode. It's really nice. It's really nice. Busy. What's up? Also work with men, not only with women. Is he going to be there? From your perspective, good morning. Nice to have you here. Is it more what we see face detection? Is it more science or fiction? It's science. You're, you're a winner of the book. And an applause for you. Applause! I brought a face detection technology from Fraunhofer Institute. And it recognized not only my face, but also my age. I'm, I'm 38. And I'm male. And I'm happy. Uh, or I'm surprised. Whoa! Oh, I'm sad. Uh, this only, not only works with one person, it works with many, many people. So we have many happy females that are glad about. We have some aggressive males. Um, I mean, you are all like directors, CEOs. You can do this in your office and see how the mood of your employees, whether you're there or not. Or if you have a point of sale, you can put this to your point of sale and see how the mood of your customers, depending on the salesperson or the salespeople. Or what you can do is if you if you work with digital advertising or digital billboards in your point of sale, you see what kind of customer is coming there. Is it a male? Is it a female? What is his age? What is his mood? And you can display ads and information regarding to his age and gender and to his mood. So I'm really happy now to show you the evolution of augmented vision so far. And therefore I welcome my colleague Dr. Futura from Tel Aviv. Uh, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Futura. Dr. Futura, Hi, nice to thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. We really sent you. You did the long way from Tel Aviv. That's right. That's right. To Berlin here. Yeah? That's right. But I think ETB is, is worse to travel, right? No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Well, what happened to you? I mean, you're looking like a cyborg today. Yes, I do. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm not a cyborg. Okay. I just look like one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what do you see here? Uh, this technical device was actually uh, invented for warehouses. So you can cross the warehouses, you see all the information through this small screen above my head. So you can scan the projects, you get all the information uh, about deliveries and stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a really amazing uh, invention, I think so. so I, I know that Google is working on something like this called Google Glass, a uh, little bit more stylish. But I think so, yes. <laughs> no, also not cutting edge so far. So, okay, Glass, take a picture. So I have it now forever. And let's see what Google is doing with this. <sighs> Plug in the Facebook. What? Why? But no one has Google Plus. <sighs> Play music. No, 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 no. Nearest park. Um, okay. Uh, this doesn't seem like a park. Oh, shit. Is it raining? So also Google has to work on this issue. So you see, after the glasses comes the lenses. You're right, after glasses you have lenses, and after lenses, you have the chip, and this is called the eye chip, and actually this is invented in Germany, and it's called Retina Implant, and it works for blind people, and gives blind people 20% vision. You're, who knows this? It was in ZDF, ARD, everywhere. So this company from Reutling, you get, it, get a chip into your eye, and it helps you to have vision again. But of course you can add information, so you have augmented vision 
in your eye. We brought you today chips you can directly implant into your eye. You can give it a round, but please come back to stage later. And gives blind people vision, but also augmented vision. We brought you today brain to brain interfaces. We will try with you where you can connect one brain to other brains and build up a collective intelligence. Or you send one sword from one brain to another brain. We brought you small robots you can swallow. They send sensor data from out of your body. We will try it out of your body into the environment, especially on apps for your doctor. Imagine this on a nano sized map where robots go through your blood system, through your ner nervous system, and measure the whole time if you're happy or not, if you're healthy or not. Imagine autonomously driving or walking or flying robots for logistics, for travel, for transportation. Imagine autonomous cars. We are here in Berlin driving with an autonomous car through Berlin winter time. Kids on the street, traffic lights, other cars. Imagine programmable matter like nanoparticles. You can program in real time and shape every object of your dreams. Imagine this pen. You can paint into the air. You can already buy this on Kickstarter for ninety dollars, where your kids can paint three D sync in your air, or your customer can paint your vision. Imagine virtual mirrors. Where you stand in front of a virtual mirror in the morning and change your clothes virtually. Imagine augmented vision for your customer, for your traveler. And these are all small micro trends, which are part of bigger trends like. Macro trends like augmented vision, or even mega trends like 3D fabbing, nanotech, biotech, robotic, outer net. And we realized in the last 10 years of transporting that innovation often comes to existence in the overlap of big trends. So if you take robotic, sensoric, and gamification, for example, who knows gamification? Gamification? Yeah, great. So making boring things funny, and there where innovation starts. Also, Sachi and Sachi from Frankfurt did this. Is there anyone from Frankfurt? Frankfurt, do, do you know the piss screen in Frankfurt? Yeah, piss screen in, in Bath, Frankfurt. You have to try it. I tried it. I'm, like, I'm drinking alcohol-free hefeweizen, and I was there. I was drinking three one half liter alcohol-free hefeweizen, and at some point I had to go to the toilet. So I thought even this place must be out of free from advertising and free from games. But even there, was the screen said piss to start. So there was a car racing game. I can control like left, right, slow, fast. And in the end, it was an advertising for a taxi company. So if you're too pissed to drive, you should take a taxi. And you're laughing, but the funny thing was, I was standing there, my colleague came, and we recognized it's multiplayer in the name of the game. So also, MIT is working on gamification, and they make every object a controller. So even bananas. I have no sound here. Yeah. Jedes Objekt wird ein Controller. Every object, like a banana, becomes a controller. Uh, Dr. Futura, let's try this live, because we have it with us. So maybe we can get five Please. people from the audience and we can try it here. Alright. So. A little bit more sound, maybe. Okay, thank you for joining me. Let's go in front of the stage, five people. I need five people. Come on. Yeah, come on, stand up, let's go. Yeah. We take one row, just five people get on it. Let's, let's have the ladies. Give an applause for the ladies. You can be here, hi. Good morning, you're right, stand here. Uh, you're here, hi. Good morning. You're left, come on this side. Yeah. Good morning. You're up. So touch the metal, don't worry. You're directly here on the stage, you know. And you're down. So. And you are the controller. So look, look to your colleague and hold up your hands now. The other hand, where it's not detected to the middle yet. Cut the middle. Put this, this hand. Yeah, right. Okay. So the hand to your colleague. Hand to your colleague, everybody. Yeah. And now you can control. So because you're left, right? You're right. You're up. Up and you're down. Okay. So she just has that magic. And then we, we play Pac Man now. Yeah, my TV deal, uh. We play Pac Man with you. That everyone. <laughs> so we created Mickey Mickey. Okay, we can even invest. Sound number two. Sound number two, please. And now, go left, go down, go down, go, yeah, go left, go down, go right, go right, go right. And you have to connect this point here. This point, 
because if you have this point, you can eat some monsters. Oh. One more try, because you have three left. You did a really great job. Okay, go, go right, go right, go down, go right. Yeah. Go up, go left, go right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> one, last, last one, one more. Okay. Try to connect the point. Try to connect. Left, up. Okay. Such a great job. So you see every of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you see everything is a controller and even, even people can become a controller. But it's not only about gamification, right? It's also about attention. Because if you have a point of sale, you need to grab the attention of the people. And this is what Ted Lay did in the supermarket in Canada. So they, they try to transport the message of service at the point of sale. <laughs> you always have to find new ways and new ideas to attract the customer. Your personal butler today. What are we shopping for? <laughs> So the first big trend I brought you is the Outernet. And this is really important for the traveler because we are not in the Internet anymore. The Internet is dead. We are in the Outernet. The Internet exploded out of the computer into the real world. We are using our augmented reality glasses. We are using our mobile phones. The digital is like a digital layer, like a fog around us. The web of things, every object becomes interactive and clickable. Every object has an IP address, like this pizza magnet. You click on it and you get location-based delivery of your favorite pizza. Just from your fridge. So everything is connected, everything is augmented. This is the outer man. And of course the outer man has a lot to do with augmented vision. We showed you Google Glass here. And this is RGA from New York and they did Google Glass for tourism. This is Google Glass. This is a bike share. And this is how both help you get around. Wondering what to see? Find a landmark nearby. So get information. Wondering to get your there. field of view. Get and now I'm really happy to welcome a special, a very special guest, the ITB innovator, Hannes Walter. He was the first one in Europe working on Google Glass. Hello, Hannes, thanks for coming. And this is actually yours. And you developed, it, you come from Graz, right? Evolanus comes from Austria. And you developed an application for Formula One, right? For Formula One. So let's see how this works. So, so you are at the race. It's so loud, you cannot hear anything because the cars are so loud. So you get augmented vision, directly the final results. Everything in your field of view. Selbstverständlich kann man die Informationen über den Bikeverlauf auch überall anders konsumieren. Man muss nicht in der Rennstrecke sein. Man kann zum Beispiel, während man durch die Stadt geht, einfach abzuwählen. Okay, now we try to get Google Glass on the screen. So we see what Hannes is seeing. Okay. Hannes, now, now we are ready. Maybe you can take a video from the audience. Italy here. 
Is it a good dinner? Garone di Vitello. Okay, I cannot read this actually. I can, can, I can speak English. Can you do Italian English, please? You can know. Kidney of a fly roasted on plate. Okay. The Dino fly. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Okay. One applause for Hannes. You are ready. I need to be in the elevator. And let's move on. Because augmented reality has also to do with the future of your catalogue. And we brought a very nice catalogue here, which is called like Kreuzfahrten.de. And there's an advertising for Africa inside. So maybe we switch to the iPad and I can I can start here the advertising and get the sound of the iPad please. And let's see what this what this scene lies for. Just turn the page around and say, okay, 3,859 euros, that's nothing, let's book it. <laughs> okay, and we immediately get the booking sign. Augmented on print. But, um, this also works with uh, Shotland, right? So let's, let's try it with Shotland. And. So you like, do you like Shotland? Scotland? Do you like Scotland? You, like, you look like you like Scotland, okay. Can, can, can you hold this like a plane? Uh, don't touch the dragon, because Shotland has a lot to do with dragons. Put it, on. Uh, put it, put it on your yeah. closer in. Yeah, this, this is uh, perfect. A little bit more uh, up to your t-shirt, please. Yeah, perfect. Oh, <laughs> what happens now? <laughs> Loch Ness here. The dragon comes. It's amazing, man. Okay, not too bad. So, also worked with Shotland. Very nice. And thank you to you. you of course, he's also a winner of a book. <laughs> and, but, but no applause, we cannot speak anymore after we saw this. Uh, let's, let's move on, because the outer net is also about... We have to switch to our computer, please. Not the iPad, the computer, please. The outer... No, the computer number, yes. One. Uh, the outer net is also about... And sound, please. Uh, virtual reality fitting. Uh, we are still at the iPad. We need uh, the computer, please, and not the iPad. Because this is a carpet, what you see here. <laughs> yeah, right. So if you if you stand up in the morning and you want to change in your hotel and you don't know what to wear, maybe you just step in front of your virtual neuro and change virtually. You can drag and drop, you can put clothes on and change virtually. This t-shirt, this trousers, and if you don't like your shoes anymore in this case, you can add and buy products from e-commerce and combine this with your own bottle. So you really see what fits. And we brought you this from Total Immersion. And let's, let's try it live here. And test it with the light. Okay, I, I, I go in the women board room here. <laughs> the board room of the wife. With a handbag, of course. I can really see, okay, what, what fits here. Okay. Now we need a date. That does for you. Come on stage. You have to try it. Everybody sees this. Everybody sees this. No stage. Where do you come from? Austria, okay. Well, welcome to Germany. Come on stage. And uh, what's your name? Uh, we go back to number four country. And then you just pull number four, please, please. Push hard. Uh, there we go. And hold up your hands, please. So and now, okay, go step, step closer to the center and put right your hand right to the t-shirt. 
Perfect. And now the trousers, the same way the trousers. Yeah. And the t-shirt again. Because if you do it twice, now walk. And just walk a little. Walk a little. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Applause for Katrin. So this is absolutely not great. And of course, again, thank you very much. And we we'll we'll go to number one, exactly. And we have a problem with suspension. This is super boring. Well, it's a web of, the web of things is also part of the alternate. Because the web of things connect every object to computers. This is super boring. This is super boring. Just sitting around is super boring. So suddenly products start talking to you. That's more like it. That's more like it. So suddenly your shoe becomes intelligent in the alternate and starts talking to you. Come on. I love the feeling of wind in my I love the feeling of wind in my shoe, they good. They, they start to motivate Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Are you a statue? Let's do this already. Okay. So in the outer net, every object is connected, every shoe, every wearable technology. And of course, this is also true for multi-channel commerce. So if you are a dealer or an agency, you have you don't have just your point of sale, you have mobile, online, virtual reality, augmented reality, and everything should be connected in one scenario for the customer. The journey starts at home on a personal laptop. So the journey starts at home. Count the touch points. Customers First is the customer on the computer. Customers tell us about their interests and are matched with a guide that fits their lifestyle. Kennedy, our customer's guide, will be with him throughout the shopping experience. Second, virtual is his home. Our virtual comes out of in the guide. browser. He decides to try them on and sets up a dressing room appointment in a nearby store. Later on that week, our customer receives a reminder for his appointment. Mobile instructions to the store and uses the app to check in upon arrival. Mobile navigation. As check our customer in. enters the store, he spots a touchscreen display. This endless aisle allows him to peruse a new line of snowboards digitally. Digital the sign of available in the store. He's also intrigued by a responsive digital poster that uses facial recognition technology to display ads marketed directly to his demographic. Face detection. Posters. The store associate has prepared the dressing room in advance. This is the consultants at the store have iPad solutions. As it also covers the fitting room, the mirror comes to life. Virtual, virtual mirror. RFID tags on the clothing prompt Kennedy. So this was called omni-channel commerce. So the connection of all channels in one story. For the journey starts at home. And this also works at Starwood now for your key. So you can use your cell phone as a key. Introducing the new keyless key. For you just open the door using your cell phone. So next big trend I brought you is the shy tech. Because we don't want high tech anymore. We don't want mouses, test keyboards, joysticks. We just want every surface to be an interactive interface. And it must be so easy that every kid can just play with it. So you don't need explanations, every surface is an interactive screen, every surface is touchable. And this is shy tech because technology, as you see, becomes invisible. Also for kids, it's great. Because here in Israel, you can use it in cars, and in Japan you can use it in trains. All windshields are augmented, and every surface is an interactive surface because using sensors and gesture control, you don't need keyboards anymore. You just, just use any object to control computers. And this is also true for leap motion. Who of you knows leap motion? Leap motion? Just one? Okay. Leap motion is a small sensor which is 100 times more precise than the Kinect. You can track every fingertip here. Great for graphic designers. Great for point of sale. And we brought you the motion here. And let's, let's go to sound number two. And I, I can lock into the motion just with my fingers here. And now you can see how good the control is. You can really track every finger. And now I want to start at number four, so I show four fingers.
because it's so ugly, there's terminals. So in the future, you just have get your control. Welcome. Hi. Nice to have you here. Uh, do you play a music instrument? Now you do. Now you do. Just pull your hand. Yeah. Thank you very much. Woo! Thanks so much. Okay, I start the bungee jump. 
laughing. And this, this is really horrible. Deja Von Gates and Alchemy Labs. Hi. Shining pillars of the indie community. You look like the right man for this. Look through the look through the doors. We need more sounds. Are you in? Are you in the content? Okay. We now go to Jack. And look down, look down, look down. Okay, this is your job, right? I okay. don't touch the surface. More sound. Yeah. So this is, if you want to tell sports to your customer, like a few extreme sports, you can give them a feeling. It's not dangerous, it just feels dangerous. is robotic and also this 3D printing. So now let's take a look into 3D printing because this is a really amazing machine called REO Robotics and you all have in your offices 2D copy machines. Yeah? You can copy, you can fax, you can scan, but this is true now with 3D. So this is a 3D copy, scan, fax machine. In the market nowadays, you have to buy different machines, but with Zeus, it's just everything is in one. And people don't really need to learn this, um, the skill of 3D software to create an object. They can just grab something they see in the environment and then put it in Zeus and scan it and produce a duplicate of it. So people can just like put an object, put an object a key, press the copy button, and within a few minutes, you will have a plastic copy out of like a physical object. Every prototype, you can scan in Berlin and fax to Dubai in 3D fax and then modify and fax to San Francisco. And this is done also by Coca-Cola in Israel. They use this for advertising. Because in Israel they have a new bottle type called 0.2 liter, like small bottles, mini bottles, and they saw how can they promote the mini bottles. They said every customer buying a mini bottle gets a mini me of itself. So a mini version. So the people can go into the scan office at the Coca-Cola headquarter in Israel, they get scanned for free, really quick, and then they get their 3D model. And this is absolutely sustainable because we have a company here called Formico M Core. You can see them outside. They have the printers there and they print with paper. My name is Gary Fudge, I'm the director of sales for the This is printed 3D with paper. Layer by layer. Full color Full color. One million colors. Now actually we have some samples here. Can we have them from your Here we can print it ahead. zubereitet werden. Wie bei anderen 3D-Druckern werden einzelne Schichten, in diesem Fall bestehend aus Zuckersirup, aufeinander gesprüht. So you can print sweets for your customer. My favorite trend, last trend, is robotics. And robotics is the thing that computers will not be just around us, like cleaning our floor or flying around, just be also in us, in our textiles and in our bodies and making us from the human 1.0 to the human 2.0 because the next evolutionary step of the human will be a technical evolution. We had my 
biological evolution, but now we have technical evolution. You see it here from DARPAR, the deep. Advanced Research Project Agency, and this can be your, your travel guide in the future, running around and showing you one of the destinations. This can also be your postman, bringing you post. It really looks scary, right? Really scary, but in the future it will be beautiful. You will have artificial skin, you will be skinny, and it will be really smart and charmant, and talking to you the same way like friends talk to you. And this is also true for flying robots. I have here this flying robot from ETH Zurich. And I'm, I'm, I'm throwing a ball and the robots catch the ball. Because they are so agile, they can fly and catch anything flying around there. or deliver products to your customer. This is Domino's Pizza in UK delivering pizza to, to your places. And San Pellegrino is doing this in Italy and showing you places. So you're sitting at home and you're controlling a robot, exploring places for you. Travel destinations. But it also has to do with artificial intelligence. We made a system. And therefore we brought in a technology which is called BrainNet. And I'm trying to find this brainwave control. You can buy this at Munich Airport. And it's a brainwave headset. It has more as a concentrate, as higher wall flux. And I did this up to level 3 because there's coming wind from down. Uh, as soon as I relax, the ball goes down. And now we have, especially for you here from Microsoft, called Brainwave Face Detect. So every face I'm looking at will be Brainwave Detected with Google Picture and stroke to the projector. <laughs> so can you, can you uh, adjust it? Configure, just configure. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> just sound number one, please. Just sound number one. Yeah. Who's this? It works, right? Professor Conradi, what applause for you. Please come on stage. Professor Conradi. So this works. And we want to say thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. I think you featured here. You just have one last job. You have to press this button. A really full power. Full power? Full power, yeah. that you can have a closer look at. 
I hope you enjoy, enjoy it. Thank you very much. Uh, due to the fact that our next session should soon start, I suggest that we only make one minute for changing yeah, the audience and so on, and then we will proceed with our second keynote. Thank you.